Hey gamers, I got a big one for you today. We are reviewing the Marvel United Multiverse. Let's check it out. All right, the first one we're gonna talk about is the Multiverse, the base game here. As you see, it comes with all the things. It'll have uh, villains, of course. The purple players can be villains or heroes, depending on how you wanna play them. Of course, the blue ones are heroes. New heroes they have, the uh, Captain Britain is Captain Carter, and of course now Loki can be played as a hero now. This is the female Thor, the Spider-Man 2099, the female Black Panther, uh, Ironheart, the female version of uh, Iron Man in a way. It's almost like the female Avengers in a way. Um, uh, and of course, a, a few more different uh, rendition of Doom, because this is a multiverse maestro, uh, the Hulk. Uh, so different villains that do different things and win different ways. In fact, for the Hulk, uh, he has this Rick Jones token that comes with it. Uh, this is plastic because this is the Kickstarter edition here. But uh, when he is on Rick Jones, you can actually damage him more or suffer less damage because he's kind of still kind of uh, sensitive to old old Rick Jones. Uh, anyway, that's the base game. Not Nothing much. This game does come with the new amount here, and they have weapons for all the Avengers from past games. Even X-Men are in here as well. There's uh, Magneto. There's Gambit. Uh, how these little weapons work. Everyone starts with one. When they use it, sometimes they have to remove it from the game. Other times it can be recharged if they do certain things in the game. Then they can recharge it. And you do want to bring your weapons into this because the game has gotten a lot harder in multiverse. But anyway, that is the base game, the multiverse. Now, if you want to talk about Fantastic Four, the coming of Galactus, here is the huge Galactus box with all the minis and everything there. It is just amazing. Um, he has four new heralds. Uh, I can't remember her name, but she can also be played as a superhero as well. You can also, there's an option to put Silver Surfer in here as one of the heralds as well. Uh, now, the game, if you're going to play the uh, Heralds of Galactus scenario, basically you'll put this down in the middle of the board, and you'll shuffle these tokens here that will each represent uh, one of the four heralds, even Silver Surfer, if you want Silver Surfer in this. And what they do on their turn, when you reveal the cards, there's a special deck for them, you're going to go ahead and apply those, uh, these little options to their card. They're each going to do different actions in the game that's going to come together. Special rules are very self-explanatory. And of course, you, you don't want them to get to the end of this track for a tough game or a basic game. And then they have the spot where you can put all of your three missions there. Now, if you want to talk about the coming of Galactus there, that's now you can fight each one of these individually too, I should mention, if you wanted to. But also, of course, if you want to fight Galactus, you'll put this down the board. And then Galactus, who is a huge little mini, sets foot on this mini. And as you see, he will just turn and wherever he is facing is where he's going to do his attack. Now, for to beat Galactus, and he is just a huge uh, uh uh, the, probably the biggest uh, mini they've made for the game. As you see, this is a regular game piece here for comparison, super big. But you're going to have to go through different achievements in the game. While you're rescuing people, punching bad guys too, you're going to have to go through a different set of achievements at the game, with the last one being convincing him not to destroy Earth. He is uber hard, even playing with him as the Fantastic Four, which I did. I played with him as other Marvel characters, which I did. Uh, just uber hard to play, but he should be because he is Galactic, Galactus Eater of Worlds, and that is dangerous there. But that is the coming of Galactus, a really, really, really uh, good expansion. Another one that shot me was Annihilation. Now, this one has a lot of characters I don't know. I, I know Moon Dragon Quasar and uh, Nova Prime here, but this one's called Viola Vrail or something. I never heard of her before. And then Annihilus is the villain here. Now, I think this kind of looks standard. It is, but in a way, it's not because. Nihilus, in the first, third, fifth, and seventh round, I think, you're going to shuffle this deck. These are complication cards, event cards that go with his master plan deck that make things a little bit more complicated. So as long as this card's play, defeated heroes are placed here, you know, or whatever. And then you discard it when the end the hero turn there, and there are three or more there. So, I mean, there's different things and different, uh, different uh, cards that do all bad things there that are on top of trying to beat Annihilus, who on his own is very hard, but makes for a very hard expansion, very hard person to beat. So I like the challenge there. The next one is the War of Kings expansion. Of course, this is the Inhumans one. You have people like Medusa, Black Bolt. Uh, I think his name's Lockjaw, Crystal. It's been a while, but Karnak, Gorgon, and I can't remember. I think Triton, I think. Yeah. Anyway, it's got Gladiator and Vulcan as the 
villains. Of course, he can be the anti-hero too. He could be a hero as well since he's purple. And uh, they all have special abilities. In fact, uh, the game does come with extra tokens. And this one and these two here, water tokens for, I believe, Triton. Uh, you got these little crystal tokens. Oh, I can't remember. Maybe for crystal. And then, of course, the map. I can't remember which one goes with which, but they will tell you. The game will tell you when you'll be using these pieces. I should also mention there were pieces for uh, Annihilation as well as Nova and uh, I can't remember another player has a charge thing that obviously that's Nova's tokens as well, that they do special things. So now these characters have these special tokens that you can place down around the board to get extra bonuses in the game to help you out. Of course, all of them do come with those weapons or whatnot here. If they don't have the tokens, they do have the weapons. Uh, these don't, I guess, but uh, sometimes they do have a little bit of both. These guys have one special ability each, which is really cool. The villains fight differently. Vulcan is super, super hard to uh, get you, but if he knocks out six heroes, then he wins, so you're stopping him before he can do that. And Gladiator has a unique little special ability that on his BAM ability, basically he is challenging one of the other uh, immortals to a duel here. Inhumans, excuse me, the Inhumans. And what it does is you grab his hero deck, you reveal two cards from it. If the hero has cards matching the symbol, then they have beat the gladiator with wilds counting as anything. However, if they cannot match the symbols on the gladiator's card, they don't have those in their card, then they will lose the battle. And if gladiator can win five battles or you win five battles against him, the first one to win that wins. It's a different win condition that we've never seen before. Uh, seriously, the Inhumans, I do not care about. But this expansion, very good. The next one is called X-Men Age of Apocalypse. As you see, it has some new X-Men here. Magneto is a good guy from the comic book storyline. A new Armageddon who is super hard, probably one of the hardest characters to beat in this multiverse here. And of course, Dark Beast, who is a little bit different. He has his own special board where you're trying to grab these in this order. If you you know rescue someone, but you, you cannot put them on either one of these, you must discard it. So you have to move up and down both of these timelines. Uh, to be able to punch him and beat him out here. At the same time, he's slicing people from the gene pool, trying to achieve his master plan. Super unique villain, very frustrating to defeat, but I love the way that they kind of change it up here to make you feel things in order. So you may not want to clear a threat on the board, but you have to at that point. There's no other choice you have to move forward. You have to get each and every one of these uh, in order to defeat him. Uh, other than that, the, the game plays kind of standard with the other two players, but these players are just really awesome to and just for reference, this is Sabretooth, that's Morph, and that's X-Man. Uh, but really good expansion. Another one that's just awesome, I just love each one of these expansions, is the Civil War. Now, this is a big one here. Obviously, you can play these heroes against other villains, but they're meant to play against each other. You got these red versus blue, blue and red chips. As they're fighting, you got the two cubes that you'll be moving on the board, and it has special conditions for each one. You can play the Registration uh, clash here scenario where one team is blue, the other team is red. Uh, blue is trying to uh, take out, take on these blue missions and complete five of them to win the game. Of course, red is trying to stop them. As you see, they each have little special abilities. It says over there at the game. Uh, the game will also come with these danger tokens for this scenario. They may have to use this in certain scenarios. Red team was each start, each one of their players to start with one of these little shield tokens. And uh, you would get rid of all of your uh, double wild cards in this in this version of the game. And of course, again, red team's trying to stop blue team here. They flip it around. Then you have my favorite version, the Clash of Heroes. The Clash of Heroes comes with a population deck and a Clash of Heroes events here that you'll just flip over and it's the secret rounds, like it says here. Uh, but population deck is included whenever you pull these population deck cards. It basically just puts more people out on the board and Whenever one of the red or blue cubes pass them up, both times, you'll be putting out more and more population. Now, in this game, you're getting victory points uh, for moving your cubes up. You get one for rescuing a blue guy, punching out a red guy, or if you're flipping, you, uh, everyone has these little tokens here for red or blue. If you pay two stars, you get a public endorsement, and that area flip, flips from red to blue. And if so, there is also a little advantage. Sometimes a lot of the players have an advantage for have, being in the home field. So you want to keep fighting over. There's a big, big fight over each one of these areas here. Plus, it also gives you an extra point when you flip it to your team status. Now, the other one, the one that you're going to get the biggest amount of points for, because this game wants you to fight it out, is you get five victory points here on the track. You've got five on the track for punching someone out. 
and uh, preventing them. So it's really awesome. However, if you ignore and you will ignore what's going on with all the uh, uh, the hero people you need to save or thieves you need to punch out, if there is an overflow in those areas, you'll be taking damage and basically just hurting yourself. So the game has this like unique balance on it in the Civil War. And of course, you can mix and match up to three of any of these on each team. They have new molds for Captain America, which I just love. The flag right there, the American flag and him throwing the disc. It just looks kind of like 3D. That's just really awesome. Of course, a new one for Iron Man. There's Iron Spider, Wonder Man, Yellow Jacket. Uh, uh, I can't remember her name. The Girl, Hawk Girl. They're all on the thing. Spectrum is in here. Uh, Hulkling. Uh, the, remember, this is the Kickstarter edition, so I don't think Hulkling is going to be in the regular edition. But really awesome, new, brand new way to play the game. The next expansion I'm going to talk about is World War Hulk. This comes with a Betty Ross uh, icon here. It's basically Rick Jones and Betty Ross in the uh, deluxe edition. Let's flip it over for Betty Ross, which will kind of help you out and protect you against this Hulk, Gladiator Hulk here. Uh, you have lots of new villains. Uh, of course, Sentry, which can, all these can be heroes as well. You got Hulk Buster, Iron Man, Hercules, and Doc Sampson. Uh, the game comes with these obedience tokens because when he beats you down, he owns you for a while and someone else has to free you up. It is so awesome how they do that with him. He is a super hard one to beat. But of course, Sentry is no pill either because when he becomes a good guy, there are certain cards that you'll put crisis tokens on here when you play them. And you have to play them. All these put crisis tokens on it. When there's three, you have to flip over a void card and something bad happens to you. Another hero takes two damage and it's unavoidable. I mean, this is just awful stuff. But I love it because Sentry is so powerful, but his cards can actually turn him evil. If you know anything about the comic book, that's kind of uh, um, in, in line with what the comic book says. But lots of good hero abilities here. Lots of different things going on. World War Hulk is one of my favorite stories, and I'm glad it's in here. But one of the best expansions I think that they made is this Maximum Carnage one. Uh, here you have Carnage, which moves across the board. He is now coming with infection tokens. These infection tokens look like this. When someone he, he infects, whenever he lands, he infects the leftmost, you know, thief or person, regular blue or red token on the board. And basically, you would just slip this underneath that token, like so. Now, once he is, you got to rescue or fight him to get him off the board. But instead of going on the mission card, they go out of the game, and the infection token comes back in. So the more he infects, you've got to get rid of him just to help not get overflow, because overflow is, of course, going to help him out and make him even more powerful. And he moves by rolling a die is how he moves. And then, um, uh, of course, he will infect the next one here. Now, for this one, wherever he lands on, if he's on anyone, then he will attack them, giving them as much damage, uh, one damage, and plus any of these infection tokens that are on the board uh, in that area for him. So he is so random, again, without the use of cards, you're just rolling the die. And, of course, you're spreading out. There, there are cards that put more people on the board. But very unique, very different. Haven't seen it before. The rest of them can be played individually. All have their special abilities. Of course, Morbius can be played as a hero as well. But this is where it comes into a new kicker. They have a new Sinister Six board that you can use now uh, to play a, a brand new Sinister Six with the ones that you see there. Any of these players, uh, these new players can be the new Sinister Six, and you have to beat them the same way the old game goes. If you want to create your own Sinister Six, though, you can. The game comes with just about every spider villain that is in any of the previous expansions or current expansions. Here's Spot from the Spidey Spider Geddon that came out individually on its own. Here's Venom that came out in the first one alone. And then here's someone like, uh, let's see, Lizard or Shocker who came out in this new expansion as well. So you would put these around a little board, and it's somewhere in here, there it is, like so. And how these rules would go, you would have a special deck of these, the new Sensor 6. And as you see, these are labeled A, B, C, D, E, F. And so it would tell you what they do in that order and whatnot, and what they're play, placing down. Or remember, you're using two of these at one turn and activating their BAMP or whatever they are. So there's a million combinations, because everyone loved the Sensor 6 expansion. Now you can pick, compare that Sinister Six with basically any other uh, villain ahead of, of uh, Spider-Man's uh, 
you know, a list of supervillains and combine any combination you want, all these doing different things to have a different game. I think that is awesome. Next, what I'm showing you is all the Kickstarter exclusive that came with the game, all the purple players, various players. They can be villains, heroes, you see big, big, bigger figures here, uh, more heroes here, more villains here, all with different abilities there, uh, all super awesome, different ways to beat them. There's also something called pets that you can get as well. Basically, you're going to shuffle. Each one has the same little card here that tells you how to play the game. You're basically just going to pick any pet, shuffle the three cards in the deck, and play the pet. It's just something to help you a little bit extra to give you some help because a lot of these people, a lot of them are super hard uh, to beat. So pets can be a way to beat them. Another way to help you out is through some of these team decks, as you see here. Uh, the team decks will tell you who all belongs on that team. So here for Guardians of the Galaxy, if you're playing any one of those characters, you can play these team decks. You'll shuffle them, flip over the top one. If a character wants to play this card instead of the card in their hand, they can discard the card in their hand and play this one in the storyline. Again, another way to give you a helping hand in all of these super hard villains and all the games and all the expansions. They also have uh, campaign decks based off popular uh comic book series as you know this is executioner's song here uh there's another one world war hook i like the old hulk i love the comic book thing it tells you what num event it is even tells you what you need to do in that event uh, to move on to the next one it's just a different way to play the game and finally is the villain fing fang foom who came with the kickstarter edition he basically has uh two modes he's either he starts off as dormant which he doesn't do much. He just sleeps, doesn't move, just puts people on the board. But eventually he's going to wake up, especially when you clear some missions. Or if you're landing on his personal space at least three times at the end, then he will wake up prematurely. Now, the game ends when he runs out of dormant cards, and there's not that many dormant cards in there, so you eventually must wake him up. Uh, and when he wakes up, boy, he is vicious, always attacking, going to the person with the most... Uh, where there's most heroes, he's doing two damage and then uh, on, on that on that tile and one additional damage to anyone on the side tiles. Uh, he is super bad because whenever he knocks you out, he plays another one of these cards face down under in the deck, so he can really run out of his deck really quick and really win the game if you're not if you're not quick on him, uh, defeating him or getting up ahead of him in the polls. Because as you see, very strong, one of the strongest characters in Marvel United Multiverse, and that is the game. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Well, uh, I will say this, I broke my camera recording this review. So this may be the last, I'm recording on my laptop camera now. I don't like the quality of it. Um, this could be the last review I do for some time because cameras are expensive and I don't have another replacement. So, oh boy. So it's a big one though. It was a big one. It's nice to go on a big one like this. Uh, what do I think? Wow. Um, I first had some issues with CMON. Of course, this has not been the prettiest Kickstarter for them. They've had a lot of issues lately uh, online. This one was really bad. People getting their packages wrong. People, Some people not getting them till they won't get them until October. I mean, at the earliest. And it's really, really bad. It's a bad situation for CMON. They broke the cardinal rule on Kickstarters. I, for me, you don't bring this out to retail before the backers get it. And they did that. And uh, um, I've always um, uh, backed uh, DC United. And I don't know. I, 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 they did break a cardinal rule. I don't know if I'll be backing them again. I don't know. I don't know at this point. Um, I think this is a really good expansion. In fact, this really surprised me because this has some of my least favorite heroes. It has some good ones, too. But a lot of characters I did not know were in this. And when I don't know them, I'm not as connected. But I really loved it. I really thought it was exciting. Um, lots of different ones. We played through all of them. The only thing I never played through was the campaign decks. We did not play through these. We didn't play through all the team decks either. We really use team decks a little bit every once in a while, especially when we lost. We try to see if we find a team deck. There are certain combinations in this game that... If you combine the right heroes with the right villain, you are going to win a lot easier than other times. We found that out. We're playing this a billion times. Uh, the pets, I will take and leave. I will take and leave the pets. I don't really think they're that big of a deal. Uh, some people like the pets. I think the pets aren't really necessary. And I didn't feel that they were that big of an advantage. I don't think we ever won a game based on the pets. 
I'm just saying. Fing Fang Foom is amazing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable uh, villain. Had a lot of fun playing Fing Fang Foom. Uh, about the only villain that I was shocked that they did not bring into this Kickstarter was Mephisto. I mean, you have a lot of D, E level, F level superheroes and villains, but Mephisto, I think he ranks as a C villain. I think at his highest, he's a C. And so I was shocked that the devil himself was not put into this game. Um, I will be honest, uh, they pack these boxes really tight. So there's a few cardboard, uh, not cardboard, but the flimsy uh, cardstock pieces that have been bent, um, especially Fing Fang Foom. Uh, it's just really hard to slip them in there because the boxes are a little too tight. In fact, one of them is borderline. Oh, no, that was Spider Geddon was almost impossible. Something. The plastic's really cheap and flimsy, and it goes everywhere. It's hard to put that one down. Uh, the rest of these are okay. So just to kind of break it down here, the base game. The base game, I, I love all of these games. The base game is fine. Probably the best one out of here is Maestro. I know that um, uh, comic book error, too, so that was really fun. Uh, the only villain, I mean, it's fun playing with Loki. The only other villain, I mean, superhero I enjoyed playing with is Spider-Man 2099 because I used to read the comic book back in the day. Uh, but overall, nice little base expansion. Uh, I will say the cardboard locations here, I can't get that thing to close anymore. It, the, it, the little octagon ones will not fit all the way in there. I don't know how they did it when I – it was all on punchboard when it came in, but – for some reason, now it's not fitting in there unless I'm doing something wrong. Well, I'm probably doing something wrong. Uh, I don't know which one to attack. I'll attack these just on top here. War of Kings, I care nothing about Inhumans. I care nothing about them, and I love uh, this. Exp I thought this was going to be one of my bot – when I was looking at these, I thought this may be my bottom expansion or Annihilation I thought would be my bottom expansion. This one is not. This one is really – I don't even know if I can rank these. I would rank this one above the base multi-universe one. I really think this may be one of my favorites. Yes. Oh, my gosh. This is a super big favorite of mine. Um, it's in the top tier there because I just think it's so unique, especially with the different tokens and everything. Uh, again, I don't care about the Inhumans, but I do love that you're dueling the Gladiator here. Um, that is a really unique aspect of it. Now, let's get to Annihilation. This one's not, I don't know which one's the worst. I really can't tell. Annihilation, again, I don't care about these characters. I know Quasar, uh, Nova Prime, and uh, Moon Dragon, but I don't know who File, I still know if I'm getting that right, File or Veil. I don't even care anymore. But Annihilus, whoa, oh man, super hard, super hard, several times to beat him. And I like the little special abilities in the game. I like how these people work together in the game. Um, I'll mention that when I get to this box set here but uh this one shocked me shocked me i thought this is gonna be my least this or war kings were gonna be my least favorite and they weren't really impressive uh let me get to one that i thought was not so so but x-men age of apocalypse i'm familiar with the timeline here i enjoyed the game very well armageddon well i, I mean oh my god apocalypse is one of the hardest ones if not the hardest to beat galactus is pretty hard too but uh apocalypse Almost impossible to beat, it feels like. A lot of these get harder. Of course, that's why you're going to need those little rechargeable weapons now because they make the game. They just took it up a level here. Dark Beast is so frustrating. It's not that he's hard. It's so frustrating to beat him because you got to get things in order. But you're, he's he's really gaining power, so you really got to work together. It kind of forces you to walk along a certain path. And I, love, I hate that, but I also love it because I've never seen it before. So that was really neat. Um... Let's see. I'm not. I'm not taking these down in any order. I guess. Let's talk about World War Hulk. World War Hulk, man. Another storyline that I absolutely love. The Iron Man Hulk Buster suit was awesome. I don't think he was the best player to play with. Um, Sentry was a lot of fun. I got to play with Sentry once, and uh, that you had to turn bad and do something bad. I mean, one time we lost the game because of Sentry, and I but I love that because he has a lot of wilds in his deck too. So it's really neat. I love the story of World War Hulk. Hulk is super. He's another one that's really intimidating. He should be, but those obedience tokens, my goodness, it's so aggravating uh, to be freed from those collars. And, but it, it thematically, it fits. So I'm really happy with also the theme of all of these as well. Speaking of theme, I mean, you got to go with Sil Civil War. Uh, had a lot of fun. When we first played this, I started losing because I was not going to attack other players. I said, no way I'm going to do that. I'm going to win the honest way. But then they started punching me out. When they got five points and took the lead, I was like, oh, Okay, and it was a knockdown, dragout battle, but then we all started getting knocked out because, you know, thieves and 
uh, you know, other pedestrians were getting hurt and uh, there was overflow in the city. It was all killing us. So we decided we had to save and punch and save and punch and do combos. If you're playing multiple turns, it goes one, then the other player goes two, then you go three, then they go four and so on and so forth. A different combinations here. We played and fought them all. You can, of course, bring any of these characters in here to fight in the Civil War. I don't like the registration one as much. I think it's fine, but just the knockdown drag out fight. That's the one I love the best. Um, and that's the one I probably won't play. Maybe I'll play registration one more time. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't. I mean, it was okay. Like I said, not bad, but just the duking it out against other superheroes. Yes. All day. Galactus is uh phenomenal. Uh, the mini, not mini, the largey, I should say is just great. Uh, the four heralds are very hard to defeat too. Even individually, they're really good. Uh, Galactus himself is so much fun. We play Galactus several times. It's hard to beat Galactus It's very hard to beat Galactus. And I like that too. Um, I haven't played with anyone outside the fantastic four. You, obviously you can play with anything. They're all interchangeable, but I feel like it's gotta be the fantastic four that takes down Galactus, but it's super hard, <laughs> super hard. Uh, one of my favorites by far is maximum carnage. And it is one, the villains are really good. In fact, Car dark carnage himself. I don't really care about. He's fine, aggravating, hard to beat, but, uh, just that sinister six board where you can, uh, mix and match. We played Sinister Six at least four to, I don't know, it was four to six times, man. We played Sinister Six with so many different combos. We had so much fun um, just playing Sinister Six versions of it. It is so great. It is such a great game. This is the, this by, by far is my favorite. I don't know. I, I cannot rank these. I cannot rank, probably Galactus second. I cannot rank the other ones. I just love them. I, I just I, I, Usually there's a dud in each one of these, but this one there isn't. And finally, I want to talk about the core box here. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow, wow. There's the Wrecking Crew. I forgot that they have a big old four-on-one battle there, which they're a lot of fun. I think every single one of these are super fun to play with. They're super good, interesting heroes. One is overpowered. I think she's I, – I believe she's over – Dark Child. I think she's a little overpowered as a, a hero. Um, just because of one special ability she can do. Yes, you can't use it all the time, but it's a super, I mean, we beat some people very easily with her and she became a super favorite with everyone. Um, uh, some of them make good combos too. I love Werewolf by Night. They, you just kind of look at the cards and see where the combos are. Uh, man Thing was really good. Uh, they have different abilities. Like whenever you hurt Man Thing, Man Thing can hurt you. He has certain cards that can hurt the other player who punches him. So that really can help you out in fights. A uh, chameleon is really hard because uh, you can't have other, you know, uh, little uh, blue or red tokens on there because they could be him. So you got to eliminate them to find chameleon. I thought that was really nice. All of them has have have unique touches. I could spend hours talking about each and every one and what made them unique, what made their character unique and hard to beat because they're all like that. They're all different. And I was just shot that after. Three waves of Marvel United. We're getting something different again. This is a. This has been. This is it for them. They're not doing Marvel. They're going over to DC, which I'm happy. I'm more of a DC guy. I can't wait to fight DC characters and DC villains. And then eventually, yes, I probably will mix and match. Why won't? Why wouldn't you? Right. Every comic book nerd's dream. This was just fantastic. This, ah, oh man, it's so hard. I mean, I love the first one because it has the most characters. It was the first one that impressed me. This is on hard mode, though. Multiverse is the game on hard mode. Obviously, they tried to up it with every expansion um, with the heroes and villains. But, I mean, just everything about this game is just unbelievably cool. And I absolutely love it. Um, I went all in for DC. I can't wait to see DC United and their second wave and their third wave. You know, and then I, I want them to do Image United, Dark Horse United. I want them to go everywhere after that, but we'll see where they go after this. Other than that, though, I think the game is awesome. Should you get it all? I mean, I, it's up to you. I mean, it's, it's uh, hundreds of dollars here. I don't feel it's wasted because I've played it several times already. Let me tell you, I have played it several times already, and I plan to play it several more. One of my favorite games of all time, Marvel United Multi-Universe. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. And until next time, gamers. I won't be seeing you because I broke my camera, but game on.